Hey, this is Joe with Leaf and Limb, and today we're going to be talking about vermicomposting, which is composting with worms. Um, really, when it comes to vermicomposting, you want to keep your worms comfortable, and there are a couple of important factors that you need to keep in mind, but in the end, if you take care of your worms, they are going to do the work for you. So let's have a look at how we can work with our worms to make some great compost. So to get your worm bin started, the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is fill it with materials that will make a nice environment for the worms to live in. Um, we call this bedding. Uh, some good bedding materials are shredded paper, cocoa coir, and a leaf mold, which is what we use. Now, once we have our bedding, we're also going to want to add some food scraps. The worms can eat their bedding, but um, scraps of uh, vegetables or fruit um, are going to be what they really love and what really helps them to grow. So we'll want to be adding food scraps to the bedding at about roughly a six to one ratio. Uh, now when you start out, you have to be very careful not to overfeed your worms. If you put too many veggie scraps in there, too many for them to eat in a reasonable amount of time, then that can lead to all sorts of problems like pests getting into the bin or the bin overheating. And so as we're starting our worm bin, we might want to do a slightly lower ratio of food scraps to bedding, something more like 12 parts bedding to one part food scraps. And then as we're seeing that the worms are eating all of that food and seem to be handling it well, we can start moving up towards more of the realm of that six to one ratio. So the best foods to give to your worms probably fall into three categories. A one would be fruit, two would be vegetables, and three is actually coffee grounds. Um, within those categories, there are a couple of foods to uh, stay away from. Uh, you want to avoid anything that's too high in acidity, so the classic example would be citrus. Um, another thing to stay away from is anything that's too hard or tough. Worms have little tiny mushy mouths and no teeth, so they don't want anything that's too hard to digest. Uh, to that end, there are a couple of things you can do to make any food a little more appetizing to them. Uh, one is you can throw your fruit and veggie scraps in a blender with some water and make a little worm smoothie. They love that. Uh, another option, especially if you're going to be waiting a few days uh, to give your scraps to your worms is you can go ahead and throw those scraps in the freezer and then when you take them out, they thaw and then go into the worm bin. They'll be nice and mushy for your worms. Probably the most important thing to maintain when you're taking care of your vermicompost bin is maintaining an adequate moisture level. Uh, not too dry, but not too wet. And a good way of determining that is taking a big handful of vermicompost and giving it a squeeze. You should see a couple drops of water coming out. And in this case, I haven't watered this in about a week, and you're seeing no drops coming out. So we want to go ahead and add some water, and then we'll see what it looks like. You'll learn through practice how much water to add on a regular basis to your vermicompost bin. Uh, I figured out that for this bin and this spray nozzle, uh, it usually works to do about 10 seconds of spraying uh, once a week. Uh, sometimes it's more like 20 if it's feeling extra dry, but again, your squeeze test is gonna be your friend. Um, Another reason I like this nozzle is because it distributes moisture evenly. You don't get pockets that are oversaturated. Um, if you have areas that are too wet or too dry, that can be really harmful to the worms. 
One other thing to keep in mind is going to be monitoring the temperature of your worm bin. Uh, usually this isn't too much of an issue, but if your temperature goes above about 95 degrees Fahrenheit, uh, that can hurt your worms. Ideally, we want a temperature more in the range of 70 to 80 degrees, uh, so more like room temperature. Um, you can check this with a probe thermometer like this, uh, but I think it's also perfectly adequate to just take your hand, stick it down in there, and if you're feeling it's especially warm down in the center of the bin, if it feels warmer than your body temperature, uh, that could be a sign that you're adding too much moisture or too many food scraps and that can be addressed by adding more bedding to your ratio. So about six months after you start your vermicompost bin, uh, you're gonna be ready to harvest your first castings. Um, over the course of that six month period, all of the bedding and food and all the good stuff you've been adding to the top has been working its way down to the bottom of the bin uh, where eventually it'll be ready to harvest. So once that six month period is up, we can uh, go down here, uh, undo these buckles and Velcro, uh, and then undo our drawstring. Uh, sometimes once you've done all that, the vermicompost will still be stuck in place. So we can gently put our hand in and break up some of that vermicompost so that it falls down into this sieve. Once you've done your first vermicompost harvest, first of all, congratulations. Uh, now you can start harvesting vermicompost uh, continuously. So that might mean once a week, that might mean once a month, depending on your needs. Uh, when you go to harvest more castings, uh, you can take really as much as you want or need at that time, but you want to be mindful of not harvesting unfinished vermicompost. And the way that you tell is very simple. If you're removing those castings and you come to a layer that has more than a couple of worms in it, that means they're still working on that layer and you should close it back up and wait probably another month before trying to harvest again. Um, and that's pretty much it. You now know how to maintain a worm bin so happy composting and I hope you have fun.